Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the brass and percussion sections. So the brass section got its name because all of the instruments are made of brass. And if you said that, then you are brilliant. So um, these instruments are made of straight metal. So they're kind of heavy, they're cold, and they have to be bent and twisted into different shapes so that people can hold them and play them. And so the end kind of looks like a megaphone. And that helps to carry the sound further. And these instruments are really loud. They don't have a reed like a woodwind instrument. They have a mouthpiece that's metal. And it's kind of shaped like a cup. And so the way that sound is produced, uh, you buzz your lips against this mouthpiece and it creates energy and the sound waves are moved through the instrument and ta-da, you have noise. Music. They also have valves, and these valves are kind of like buttons as opposed to keys on a woodwind instrument. Um, so you change the position of the valves to change the note that you're playing. These instruments are the trumpet, French horn, trombone, and tuba. The first one we'll talk about is the trumpet. So just like the other members of the orchestra, the smaller instruments play the higher notes. So the trumpet is the smallest instrument of this family, and it plays the highest pitches. It's got a really bright sound that carries over the orchestra. If you stretched out the trumpet to its full length, it would be six and a half feet long, which would be like impossible to hold. So it's kind of bent and twisted so that people can play it. Usually you'll have two to four trumpets in an orchestra. They're really loud, so you don't have to have as many. And they play melody and harmony and rhythm. So trumpet is they vary what they play a lot. There's a lovely photo of a trumpet. Isn't that lovely? Oops. I, what did I do? Oh. Oh no. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> then the next instrument um, plays slightly lower notes is the French horn. So this guy, if you unrolled all of the brass tubing, it would be 18 feet long. So it's twisted up a lot so that you can hold it. And it's kind of shaped like a circle with a large bell at the end. And you actually hold it with the bell facing away from the audience, so sort of behind your body. And you put your hand inside of the bell to kind of muffle the sound. I'm not really sure why you want to muffle the sound, but that's how they play it. And so there's two to eight French horn players in an orchestra usually. And this one also has valves just like the trumpet. So you can see there that the bell is not facing the audience. It's facing the back of the player. And there's all that tubing there that's rolled up. If you undid it, it would be 18 feet. The trombone is a little bit different because it uses slides instead of button valves. And you've seen someone play the trumpet before, or the trombone before. They kind of pull in and out to change the pitch that they're playing. And I think trombone actually means paperclip in French. So you can kind of see where they got the name for paperclip because it looks like trombone. And they, yeah, <laughs> they're playing a paperclip. So it looks like an S. Um, you hold it horizontally out in front of you, buzz into the mouthpiece, but you don't actually press any buttons. You just use seven different positions on the trumpet, trombone, sorry, to play different notes. Usually you've got three people playing these, and it's going to play notes in the same range as a cello and a bassoon. So there you can see it's kind of shaped like an S. And there's a kid wearing a really cool shirt playing a trombone. You go, kid. Good job. And the tuba. Boom, boom, boom. So this guy helps hold down the low notes of the entire orchestra. And uh, this is a huge metal tube. And the tube itself is actually bigger. So that means it's going to be lower. And it's 9 to 18 feet in length. But a, usual, a standard tuba is going to be about 16 feet of large brass tubing. And there's only one of these guys in an orchestra. 
So when you're playing in an orchestra as opposed to marching band, you play this tuba sitting down and you set the instrument on your lap and the bell faces up. This one has valves and it's played the same way the other brass instruments are played. There you go. Doesn't that look fun? Looks so fun. All right, the percussion section is, when I say it's the largest in the orchestra, really it's just the most varied. There are multiple different instruments in the percussion section and they can be just endless in what you can have. So in general, percussion instruments are just anything that makes a sound when it's hit, shaken, or scraped. Which, when you think of it that way, anything could be a percussion instrument. Your body can be a percussion instrument. The floor. Um, a bowl full of dry macaroni noodles can be a percussion instrument. Okay? So, some of them are tuned and can actually play different notes. Like the xylophone, the timpani, or the piano. But then some are untuned, and so they're just going to sound like a drum, or a crash, a cymbal. So the percussion keeps the rhythm, and it adds a lot of interesting excitement to the piece itself. So unlike most of the other players in the orchestra, a percussionist usually gets to play a lot of different things during one concert. So common ones that you might recognize are the timpani, xylophone, cymbals, triangle, snare drum, bass drum, tambourine, maracas, gongs, chimes, celesta, and piano. You ever heard of those? Yeah? So why is the piano a percussion instrument? So some people think it's because your finger hits the keys. That's actually not it. So if you were to open up a piano, you would see a bunch of strings in there and what actually happens is when you press a key on the piano, it triggers this hammer to strike the strings. So the sound that a piano makes actually comes from something striking the strings, which makes it percussion. So there's what a percussion section might look like, and they would be behind the orchestra. So you may start playing the timpanis over here, and then you might have to run over here and play the marimba and the xylophone, run back over here, run back over there. So you would have two or three people back here and they've got to coordinate not running into one another and getting to all the things that they need to play at the right time. So that can be a little chaotic, but it sounds fun to me. So some tuned instruments um, in the percussion section would be these. These are timpanis. So these are giant drums, okay, kettle drums, and they go boom, 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 boom. You've probably heard them in like a bunch of different songs. Um, and you can actually remember this because the part of your eardrum that actually vibrates and helps you to hear is called your tympanic membrane. So the timpani gets its name from eardrum. That's so cool, Miss Folks. Thanks for sharing that trivia fact with us. Then these are xylophone and marimba, okay? So you, you strike the wooden little tile thing. I cannot think of words today. Um, and then it goes through these tubes. So these really high, these really short tubes right here, are they gonna be high or low notes? High, right, because they're small. And then as you get bigger, these are gonna be your lower notes. This is called a celesta, or glockenspiel, actually. Um, so it's a tiny little one, but it's set up kind of like a piano, and it makes little bell-like sounds. And so these are instruments that do not have a pitch. So you can't sing, if someone plays a drum and says, sing that. If I go like this, can you sing that note? No, because it's not a pitch, it's just a sound. So this is a bass drum, this large thing right here. This is a snare drum. So the reason it's called a snare is underneath this drum head, there are some wires with little metal beads on them and you can tighten them and loosen them and they create that rattling sound that's known, that's recognized as the snare drum. This, I'm not really sure what this thing is called, but you take this little mallet and you scrape it along the wooden ridges and it makes like a, sound. 
So, yeah. We already answered about the piano. What about that person waving a stick? What do they do? They stand in front of everybody and wave their arms around. That's the conductor. So they basically give cues to the entire orchestra that tells them when to play, when not to play. It, they're just there to help them, remind them, lead them, keep them on pitch and tempo. And that's pretty much it. So now you are a professional orchestra person. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, email me. Um, that entire PowerPoint, the first half of it I went over yesterday, but the whole PowerPoint is actually on Schoology already. So make sure you study the strings section and the woodwind section and uh, finish the activity today for Antonio Vivaldi and the instruments of the orchestra. Yay!